This video is sponsored by Green Dragon Fest. You see goblins trying to sneak up on you through the bushes in the darkness, but they don't seem to realize you've detected them. What would you like to do? Wait a minute, who am I even game mastering for? That's where you come in. I need you to join me for Green Dragon Fest at Ancient Lore Village in Knoxville, Tennessee from May 16th to the 18th. And it's not just me who will be running games. Play in sessions game mastered by some of your favorite YouTubers and game designers at a venue that looks like it's right out of a fantasy novel. You'll be able to play with Bob World Builder, Josiah from Dungeon Dad, Shadow Dark's author Kelsey Dion, Runehammer's Brandish Gilhelm, Justin Alexander from The Alexandrian, DM Scotty, Ted from Nerd Immersion, and more. Admission includes meals, drinks, game sessions, and while the rooms last, you can upgrade to stay at one of the fantasy-themed suites right here at the Village. This exclusive event is only available for 70 guests, so get your tickets while you still can at the link in the description or at greendragonfest.com. See you in May, Dragon Raiders. Deathbringer here. Subscribe to the channel and sign up for the Deathbringer RPG newsletter at the link below. Professor DM here. Quick, what is your most anticipated TTRPG of 2024? Is it D&D, &D, MCDM, Daggerheart, Stormlight? For me, the most highly anticipated and most innovative game is this game, Crown and Skull from Runehammer. Written by the enigmatic and iconoclastic Brandish Gilhelm, Ingrid Bernal, Hanker Infernal, a man of so, so many aliases and talents, author, artist, editor, publisher. And it's not backed by a Kickstarter campaign, Hollywood money, or corporate money. It's truly independent. This is one guy with a singular voice and unique vision and that's what we're taking a look at today. All right, let's open up Crown and Skull and have a look. We've got like the leather type binding. It is 300 pages. They're very thick and substantive. We have a ribbon here. Look at this terrific map art on the inside cover. Very evocative. Uh, this one's inscribed to me. I got my copy early. Full disclosure, Hanker and Fernail uh, did work for me on Deathbringer. All right, uh, and he's my buddy, but that has no impact on uh, on this. I was not paid for this review. So we got uh, the forward and begins with the player's guide, concepts and uh, content. Uh, they don't waste a lot of time with, oh, this is uh, what a role-playing game is and all that stuff. Instead, we get right into uh, the North Holds, which is the setting, and the hometowns. There are three hometowns, which we'll come back to. There's Gardenboro, the Forest Refuge, Rivergate, the Trade City, and Slimshire, a High Plains Outpost. That's important for later. Put a pin in that. Here, 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 here is essentially the game, right? So we've got phases and rounds, right? And these are the different types of roles. We've got a flat roll, player declared roll, called for defense roll. Crown and Skull is a D20 roll under system, so you're trying to get under your skill. Natural 1 is a critical success. Natural 20 is a critical failure. With a critical success, you get bonus effects. The most innovative concept in this game is called attrition. There are no hit points. When you are injured, you cross off equipment and or skills. And the worse you get hit, the more skills or equipment you lose. And sometimes you can choose, and sometimes it's randomized. And the idea is, just like Daggerheart's 2D12 system, you're turning the roll into a narrative. You might get hit and decide that that blow hits your backpack and shatters the potion that's inside it. Now you've lost that potion. Or maybe you lose your lock picking skill because the blow broke your finger and now you can't pick locks for the rest of the session. Like in Into the Odd, Karen and MCDM, you do not roll to hit. You only roll for damage and armor absorbs that damage. So you never feel like you whiffed and wasted a turn and it makes combat feel more dangerous. Action occurs in phases. A round has five phases. Different characters go on different phases, like wizard type characters. Spellcasters will always go at the end because they're busy casting the spells. Characters are built with hero points. So you build your character and their archetypes, or you can build your own. And hero points are also the currency. There's no money. I mean, there is, but you don't really worry about that. You, your reward is hero points, which you use to build your character and become a greater hero. Now, when you create your character, you're going to choose a town for the party, and the party comes from that area. And that's really cool, because it answers the question, 
Hey, why are we traveling together? We have character templates that are going to seem familiar. We have the soldier, the adventurer, the sage, the hoodlum, and it clearly lists with bullet points what you can do. So you start out with a flaw, right? So every character has a flaw, which I love, right? We're not just all superheroes. Then you have a core ability. So here's battle master, damage dice rolled, maximum are rolled again. And there's no limit to the number of times the dice can explode. And you have a list of skills. You see these numbers? That's what you have to roll under on the 20 sided die to succeed. Super clear. You can also customize your character and equipment. You get 50 build points to build your character. Choose a flaw, a core ability, like brutal fighter, or if you want to make an archer, you could do uncanny shot. And then you buy some skills. And the skills are all on these two pages. Like pickpocket, acquire smaller, simple items on unsuspecting targets. One thing you won't find is ability scores. If you want to be strong, you need to buy the skill muscle. If you want to dodge, you got to pick evade. And this eliminates all the layering you see in a system like D&D or Pathfinder, where you add an ability score modifier and a proficiency bonus and other circumstances onto a D20. Streamlining combat and making it flow faster. These four pages deal with your character background. You can either roll it or choose it. Who are you? What are you equipped with? It all started with, like, how did your adventuring career begin? But now I, right? So my brother disappeared. But now I fight to earn my place in society. Really cool. There's hundreds, thousands of different backgrounds that you can come up with with this system. All right. So you get your starting points. You choose your flaw. You choose a core ability. And you build out from there, choosing your skills, buying your and customizing your equipment. This is great design. We have the equipment list. You don't have to flip. All the equipment is here. Description, what it costs, how much damage it does, no extraneous information. Is it a piercing weapon, a slashing weapon, a bludgeoning weapon? That kind of stuff slows down the game. If you're a spellcaster, you've got basic spells and then you can customize the spells on top of that with these various effects. Spells are one and done, so you have to memorize them after you use them. Character lineage, you could be a human, an elf, a halfling, a dwarf, and frog kin. Yes, there are frog people in this game. As your character performs heroic deeds, they gain renown, and eventually they attract the attention of the forces of the crown or the skull, the mechanic from which this game takes its name. The crown are the forces of law and order. They're protectors and knights. Those who choose the skull swear allegiance to no one. In fiction terms, Luke Skywalker would be the crown, and Conan would be the skull. And when you pick a side, you unlock certain skills and equipment that can only be used by your side, either the crown or the skull. We have examples of heroes, the villains, and the illustrations are in the middle, and they are excellent. Several pictures by Stephen Nichol, Robert Rudnicki, Sean Bova, Luke Eidenschink, I love this city by Fernando Salvatera, and Ingrid Bernal, aka Brandish Gilhelm himself. Now why would he do this? Why would he put the illustrations in the middle instead of breaking up the text? By placing all the information on facing pages and including a ribbon, you reduce the need to flip and wear and tear on the book. This is a book meant to be used as a tool. The Game Master section is excellent. How to teach the game, how to set up a game, how to wrap up a game, how to track the phase and damage, negotiate with the players. There's an attrition deep dive so that you can master the concept. There's also an atlas, descriptions of all the regions and landmark locations of the crown and skull world. I love these stat blocks. Skeleton, 10 hit points, three attacks, three defense, goes on phase three. And their tactics are bullet pointed. Super clear, it's not overwhelming, easy to use during the actual game session. Appendices like the Herbalist Guide, Coins and Cash, Gems and Minerals, Unusual Armaments, Junk, Tinctures, Potions, Magic Stuff, Weird Stuff, Lots of Random Charts, NPC Templates, Folks you can meet in a town, folks you can meet in the wilderness. A hundred people to meet with names and descriptions. Elroy the Fowl, a once wealthy coin counter whose heart has been turned cold. You need an interesting, quirky NPC? You got a hundred of them here to use. And adventurers of note, these I think are the characters from Brandish's actual campaign. Crown and Skull is a tour de force. It is like the opposite of every new role-playing game. 
Nothing I've seen looks like this. Every fantasy RPG I see published has similar looking art with huge splash pages filled with bright colors breaking up every page. Crown and Skull Ops for pen and ink illustrations and is mostly text. Other games look like coffee table books. Crown and Skull looks like it should be on my library shelf next to Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. Every other game is doing Kickstarters. Crown and Skull, there's no Kickstarter campaign. You just go to the website and buy it today. It's counterintuitive and iconoclastic. It's like nothing else. So who is this for? I think it's best for people who enjoy customizing characters, spells, and equipment instead of ordering off a cheesecake menu of prefab options. And people like my player Maria, who playtested it and said she liked it because, quote, hit points are boring as hell. I also think it works best for groups of three or four. One sticking point might be if you have a type of player who is difficulty deciding what piece of equipment they're going to lose, that could slow things down. But for people who are looking for a change of pace and a game that is truly innovative, Crown and Skull takes the crown. Crown and Skull is available from Runehammer Games at the link below. Also below, you'll find links to Dungeon Craft on Facebook and Patreon where you can support my work and get the quick start rules to Deathbringer at DriveThruRPG. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, and may all your rolls be 20s. So, Deathbringer, what would you rather read? Crown and Skull or Great Expectations? Crown and Skull. I've already read Great Expectations, and it wasn't all I'd hoped for. Now sign up for the Deathbringer newsletter at the link below and click on more Dungeon Craft.